what is going on guys and welcome to another episode or just video of me answering your DMs. So if you don't know what this series is that I've been doing as of recently, every couple of weeks or so, I'm going to sit down and go through my social media accounts and answer your guys' DMs. It's just a way for me to get back to you guys and just really set aside some time to reply to you. As always, if you guys are not following me on my Instagram and Snapchat, it's right here. The links are right here. You should probably do that. but. Let me start reading some DMs. Okay, so the first question that I'm going to answer that kind of turned out to not be a question because he messaged me later on and said, oh, never mind, I found the answer to this. But basically, he was curious about getting a three-year contract in the reserves of guard and whether or not if you deploy when you're in college. Because some people think that, you know, if you go in the reserves of the guard, if you're in college and you don't have to deploy, which is kind of the case. And so what I want to do for my response to this is kind of clarify a thing or two. So if you are in the reserves and you are in the guard, if your unit calls you to deploy, you've got to deploy. Basically the only reason or way that you could get out of a deployment if you're in the reserves of the guard is if you have some like legitimate reason of why you should not deploy. Whether it could be family issues, it could be school related issues. Maybe you're like, you know, I'm working on, I don't know, my master's degree or something and me having this time away would cause me to potentially fail my master's. And what will happen is you'll have to get an approval from like a lieutenant colonel, battalion commander, or just like a brigade commander. Like a very, very high ranking officer is going to have to approve you not getting deployed. But if you're in school and you're in the reserves of the guard, you still do have to deploy again, unless for some reason, you can get a, a waiver or something or an approval to not deploy by some high ranking officer. Other than that, you can't just be like, oh, I don't feel like going. So the next question here is referring to wanting one MOS, which would be 31 Bravo, and then that isn't available for whatever reason, potentially going with 68 Whiskey, and what are the opportunities and stuff when it comes to airborne school, what did he say, ranger school, air assault school, and all the other schools like that. And the reason that I'm picking this question to talk about is because it relates to a lot of you guys a lot of you guys will ask me you know what are the chances of doing this that and the other school well, he's wanting to do either army active duty or army national guard i will say right off the bat if you're doing national guard or reserves the opportunity or the odds of you getting these extra schools not getting it in your contract or even the possibility of getting in your contract is very very low and even if you're active duty, the odds are really low. Cause I don't think a lot of people understand, even though I've said it before, you know, getting airborne in your contract, it really depends on, are you gonna go to an airborne unit? If you wanna go to air assault, are you gonna go to a unit that needs that somebody with that qualification? Are you, if you're wanting to go to ranger school, I have said that if you really wanna go to ranger school, there's a couple ways that you can do it. You can either go to the 75th range regiment, which you would get an option 40 contract, which if you make it through RASP and all that stuff, if you're in the 75th, odds are they're gonna send you to ranger school. The other way is you go the officer route and you become an officer whenever you're at your bullock, then they'll let you go to ranger school, or at least that's kind of the case for what a whole bunch of officers had told me. Because for officers, we don't get like stuff in our contract like that. Like I don't like put, airborne on my officer contract because I'm, it's it's not the same thing right so for officers it depends on what you know MOS you're going to have and then for enlisted soldiers it really just depends on what unit you're going to and like you just don't get like you can't really control what unit you're going to go to so if you ask me what are the odds or what are the chances that i'm going to get to go to air assault school or something like that I really don't know. Okay, so the next question I'm going to talk about, I'm actually gonna kind of read this question. I think it'll give you guys a little bit of context. And I think it's gonna be somewhat related to some experiences that some of you might have or could have whenever you actually go and talk to a recruiter. So, uh, his name's Connor. He is interested in joining the army, um, but let me read it now. It wasn't what I thought it would be. So he went to talk to a recruiter. It wasn't what I thought it would be. The recruiter pressured me to join even though I expressed that for me, this was a pretty preliminary meeting. So he, he said that he went and go, he told the recruiter that it was just like a small step meeting. I'm not trying to join right now, but the recruiter pressured him 
into joining quickly, which I have told you guys recruiters are gonna do. Um, I just wanted some questions answered. I took your advice, went in with a plan on what MLS I wanted and researched beforehand so that I could somewhat sift through half the truths and whatnot. The recruiter gave vague answers even when I asked specific questions. What would you suggest? Hang in there and hope the recruiter gets better as I go through the recruiting process or go meet with a different recruiter. So I don't think that he's necessarily a bad recruiter in general. I think some of it kind of might have to do with the questions that you're asking. So a lot of people will ask about specific MOSs. So what is this MOS like? You know, I'm wanting to do such and such as MOS. What is this MOS like? And a recruiter is probably gonna give you some kind of a vague answer as to what that MOS is like because I kind of do the same things because you don't know what that MOS is like. What's the data like for this MOS? What's this MOS like? Sometimes specific questions that you're going to ask a recruiter, they're not gonna have very specific answers because they don't have that personal experience with it. Just like a lot of you guys ask me questions, I don't have personal experience with certain areas of the Army and recruiters are no different. They're gonna be trained on the whole recruiting process. I haven't been to a recruiter's school or anything, so I don't know exactly what they're trained on, but they're trained on helping people actually join, you know, all the different benefits, all the different things that you should get whenever you're actually joining into the military. And then they can offer you advice on their experience in the military in general. So if you're asking about specific MOS, your recruiter doesn't know what MOS, you know, or doesn't know much about that MOS, that's why I say, you know, make sure you find out what MOS your recruiter has so that you can kind of understand, you know, where they're coming from. And then, you know, if they don't know what the heck is going on with that MOS, maybe another recruiter in the building, because there should be, you know, several different recruiters in the same little office area, maybe that they can help out. Another thing kind of related to this question that I have gotten before is people go and they talk to a recruiter and they're upset because they can't, the recruiter can't give them a direct answer on what they qualify for and what bonuses and stuff they're gonna get, all the benefits they're gonna get, because a lot of that has to do with once you take the ASVAB score and you can see what you qualify for, then the recruiter can pull it up and he can pull up, you know, different possibilities for contracts. Like you can get this MOS and it comes with this bonus and it comes with this, that, and the other. You can pick this MOS and it comes with these other bonuses, right? So those are things, if those are the questions that you're asking a recruiter, I've seen people get upset and then message me about that. That's because you need to go and take the ASVAB first. So kind of the moral of the story with this question is and summarizing to you is yeah, kind of just, you know, stay with that recruiter. He doesn't seem like he's a bad guy. Recruiters are always going to kind of just nudge you to join maybe a little bit faster than you're comfortable with. You know, if you say, you know, I want to join in like three months, they might be like, you know, why not join now? Like what's the difference in joining three months versus joining now? That might be something that recruiters will try to, you know, tell you just because, you know, it's, it's a normal, it's a normal thing for people to, if you don't do act on something quickly, people will generally kind of just back out of it. So that's why recruiters do that because if they just let you say, hey, I'll be back in three months and they don't ever contact you or if they don't ever tell you to come back, then a lot of times that, that person who said, yeah, I'll be back in three months never comes back. And I've always got to interject this here in my answering your DMs questions. You know, this person says, I could ask you a question. I'm going to MEPS tomorrow and I was curious about something. Just a tip guys, and I say this all the time, if you want to ask me a question, go ahead and ask me a question. So for example, if this guy had a really good question then I could put it on this video, could have helped out a whole bunch of people, or I could have just replied to it right now, but now I'm not going to have that chance, especially whenever I sit down and reply to a whole bunch of people like I am right now, then I get flooded with a whole bunch of replies and then sometimes I might forget to reply to that one person who said, hey, can I ask you a question? And then there's, you know, a whole bunch of other DMs. So that's just a little tip for you guys. If you wanna ask, just go ahead and ask. Okay, so here's a pretty serious question, but it's actually something that you guys should know if you're wanting to join the military, if you're a family member of somebody in the military. And the question is, if you go to basic training, if apparently a really close relative such as your mom or dad is dying, do you get to see them? Like, do you get to leave? That's, that's the question here. So what happens? How does this whole kind of thing go down? So not just basic training specific, but if you're really anywhere in the military, you have a loved one in the military, you are gonna have to go through the Red Cross, right? So you're gonna have to go through the Red Cross. So hopefully, you know, they're at basic training, you know, you're gonna know what specific unit they're in. So if you contact the Red Cross, then the Red Cross will then contact your unit. And what'll happen is if it isn't actually like, you know, close relative, so like parent, sibling, grandparent, 
or you know a guardian that I think you like ha would have to like prove or something that like hey yeah like this person like actually raised me even though they aren't technically my mom or dad but in cases like that not just like oh my best friend died or oh you know my possibly even like cousin or something like that maybe if you lived with your cousin growing up that could be the case again you would have to kind of justify that but in these circumstances they're going to tell you about it you're going to be at basic training you're going to know about it and they're going to ask you hey do you want to stay here and finish out your time here or do you want to go home and then come back to basic training later and the reason that they would say do you want to stay here is because sometimes this could happen you know the last week of basic training and you find out that your grand your grandfather died this last week of basic training you got five days left you know do you the funeral is in four days or something like that. just some, something crazy they're gonna ask you like do you want to stay here and graduate and then kind of go see your family like right after that happens you might miss it or whatever or you would have to leave leave basic training and then come back and then potentially even have to start all over especially depending on how long that period of time that you're going to be gone is so that's going to be what happens that's going to be the options they're going to give you do you want to stay or do you want to go if it's early on in basic training people will leave and this is probably going to happen it's sad but you're probably going to see it happen so just make sure you are aware if you are in any military training environment if somebody's deployed if somebody's you know in any circumstance you contact the red cross and then they will contact your unit to let the loved one know all right and one of the questions that i don't like getting that much which are the very general questions but i'm going to answer it for this context right because i still have to answer it every now and again because i know not everybody watches every single video every single question and answer whatever so the question that i got is hey i'm joining the army but i'm not in shape yet do i know any good army workouts right so this is me somebody asking me this i get this every single day hey i'm not in shape do you have any good workouts to help me get in shape number one i've got several different like tips and videos and things like that but the thing that you guys need to keep in mind is number one don't focus too much on making it like an army workout or like you're gonna go climb ropes you're gonna be doing this that and the other you're gonna be doing ruck marches you're gonna be doing all, all kinds of things that are like army exercise stuff the thing that you need to focus on is just the bare bone basics you just need to get in shape just get in general shape so you need to do some running you need to do some you know squats in the gym you need to do some like weightlifting stuff you need to be doing push-ups you need to be doing you know ab work and getting your sit-ups and stuff ready so you need to be doing just like normal gym workout stuff i am not a fitness youtube channel right so there is a million out there on youtube you guys can literally what i recommend for you guys to do is if you are starting out in the gym and you're like i don't know what to do so for me again i'm not a fitness youtuber so i'm not sitting here you know making all these like gym workout videos and like showing you guys what i do in the gym every single day but there are people out there that do that i've made a video talking about the people that i think that you should look at but what you can do is let's say you're just trying to get started go on youtube and type in what's a good workout split for beginners you know just type in that if you want to work out your upper body what's a good upper body workout exercise watch somebody do some kind of exercise watch their form watch what they're doing watch what machines they're using watch what whatever they're doing and then go in the gym and do that what's a good lower body exercise watch that video watch that person do squat just watch these people do their exercises in the gym and you will kind of figure it out right so going to the gym like you're not going to be an expert at it whenever you first start you're not going to be like this guy that knows everything about the gym if you go in there and you don't have a plan if you don't have some kind of idea of what you're going to do if you're a beginner you're going to kind of go in the gym you're going to wander around and be like i'll just do this machine i'll do this machine this machine looks cool i'm going to do this oh, i saw somebody do that i'm going to do this so what you need to do again go on youtube look up like actual you know fitness youtubers not myself not myself so it doesn't have to be army related exercises go and watch those get a plan down write down what they do go to the gym do what they did the next day watch their next video so they have some kind of chest you know some split where they're doing chest and tries and they're doing back and buys and they're doing shoulders and arms and they're doing legs that's a basic bro split and just do that watch the videos go in the gym and do it that is how you're going to learn you're not really going to learn by looking up you know basically uh just black and white you know text and just say 
do bench press, you know, five by fives or something like that. You know, actually being able to watch somebody's form for like on YouTube, like watching their form, seeing the proper form, and then you yourself going in the gym and doing it is gonna help you out a lot. And like everything else, it's gonna take practice, it's gonna take time. If you've never really worked out much before, if you're not in shape, it's going to take you some time. You're gonna have to get used to the body, the movements and everything, but if you keep doing it, you stay consistent, like I've said, a bajillion times the most important thing is to stay consistent in the gym then you're gonna be okay you're gonna get in shape and if you're in shape in general you're gonna be in shape for the army and there you go you are army fit and as always don't forget to do your cardio but that is gonna be it for this answering your DMs video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I answered kind of a, a variety of things today, I guess. But yeah, if you guys have a question, hit me up on my Instagram and Snapchat. I will get back to you guys on there. Or at least I get back to as many people as I can with the time that I have because it's just insane. So as always, remember, if you want to ask me a question, just ask me a question. Especially if it's, hey, I have a quick question. Well, if it's a quick question, just ask me the question. That's so much easier on me. It makes me so, I mean, so much more likely to reply to it because it's a quick, quick question. I get a quick answer, boom, then I don't have to you know, consciously think about trying to go back to this person. And then I feel bad because if I forget that I replied to somebody or, or told somebody I would answer a question, then I forget, I feel really bad. So for your sake and for my sake, if you have a question, ask a question. I love you guys. I hope you guys have an amazing freaking day. Follow me on Instagram or Snapchat if you haven't already. I've said that a whole bunch of times. Um, I think when this video goes up, I might be doing a giveaway in the next coming weeks or, or actually next coming days, maybe a week maximum. So follow me on Instagram for sure if you want to do, be a part of that giveaway. I'm done with this outro. That's it. That's it for this outro. I think that was a good one and I will see you later. Drop.